our next one was a request from you guys and I was just there. So I'm not even looking at the menu. I'm going to tell you what I did. So <laughs> this one is Cracker Barrel. So when I was in Nashville for this conference, we had breakfast a couple times at Cracker Barrel. And I'm like, I can find something anywhere. Here we go. Welcome to Salad with a Side of Fries. I'm your host, Jen Trepic, talking wellness and weight loss for real life. We're here to clear up the myths, misinformation, bad science, and marketing to teach you how to eat and how to cheat. Are you ready? I'm having salad with a side of fries. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Salad with a Side of Fries. I'm Jen Trepic, your host with you every single week. Joining me today is Stephanie back again because she's just the best and indulges me when I ask if she wants to record with me. (laughs) Hey, Jen. Hey, everyone. Glad to be with you again. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. And it's actually fitting that you're here for today's episode because I feel like we eat out a lot together. Oh, we've hit, hit up quite a few places in the city. Yeah. So today's episode, everybody, so it really stems from my month of August, where I was out of town for almost the whole month. The first week I was in Nashville for a conference, shout out to Podcast Movement and my crew (laughs) who is with me that week. They were like, oh wait, salad with a side of fries is real because I did order it quite a bit. Um, And then (laughs) I went from Nashville to Michigan. So I was in Michigan for over two weeks. Part of that was working from there you know, staying with family. And part of it was a family vacation where we drove to Northern Michigan. So it's like, I've done all the travel kinds of like both vacation and work in August. And it made me start to think about how, you know, for some of us, and certainly for me at other times in my life, traveling, whether for work or for fun, often felt like, you know, health goals derailed you know, or it meant like packing a suitcase full of like my own food, bars, shakes, snacks, like things to have. So I wanted to talk about all this because I also hear people say, oh, I can't eat there or there's nothing for me to eat at that restaurant. And Stephanie, I was telling you this story today. My friend's husband said to me not too long ago, we were thinking about this restaurant. Can you find something there? And I was like, I can find something anywhere. (laughs) Like, challenge accepted, (laughs) right? So I put it out on social media to say, what are the restaurants you don't know what to order? Or the restaurants that you feel like you're avoiding because you're not sure, or you feel like that restaurant is going to derail you, right? And then in addition to that, we got a couple questions. So I'm going to tackle all of your restaurants And your questions, Stephanie and I both have these menus pulled up. So we're going to do this in real time. (laughs) I promise you, I have not, literally my prep was to open all the windows of the menus. I have not like pre-looked at the menus. (laughs) Which by the way, we were also talking about is something that's like rare. So I'm one of those people that like, you tell me, okay, we're going to go to dinner. Or like, if I am traveling for work, I'm like, well, what's in the area? Where can I find something like healthy for breakfast or lunch or whatever? And I'm like, I always look at the menu before. And then I also look at the Instagram. Sometimes I'll do the Yelp reviews. Like I am like in it. So I love it. My issue with Yelp (laughs) and all of the Yelp travel, like not travelocity, whatever all those things are. My issue is I don't know anybody's frame of reference. So I have a really hard time (laughs) trusting people's opinions. (laughs) Like if they're all bad, then like, okay, steer clear. But I always question, like, I don't know this person's frame of reference to so (laughs) whatever. Anyway, before we get into all the menus, I have to ask you all, are you a member? Did you know that we have a membership specially for you as valued listeners of Salad with a Side of Fries? Maybe you haven't heard. (laughs) I only talk about it in every episode. So (laughs) here's the deal. Our membership is $10 a month. 
you get weekly recipes, a monthly article or tool, extra discounts for me and our partners, plus access to live Q&A sessions. Seriously, a bargain. Free if you take advantage of all the discounts and the live chats. I always say a truly simple, economical way to show yourself that your health is a priority. Plus, by being a member, you support this podcast and this community so we can continue bringing you new episodes every week. This week, our members are getting a recipe for vegan Parmesan cauliflower steaks with hemp pesto zoodles. So I think one of the things, as we get into restaurants in a second, I think one of the things restaurants do well is often treat vegetables like we would typically treat a meat. Like they do more interesting things to vegetables sometimes. So this one actually feels super decadent, but great for any season, right? Even while it's fall, but still warm out. Surprisingly easy prep, like 10 minutes to prep and then it's all cook time. Um, You could actually make this and bring it as like two sides to a barbecue if you wanted to. So, you know. Also, in honor of it being September, which is not just my birthday month and Stephanie's birthday month, P.S. Uh-huh. the same birthday. I know. Uh-huh. <laughs> but as it's the last month of the quarter, it means it's time for your quarterly live Q&A session. So again, I'm doing this as a one-on-one because I love talking to you. So you definitely want this recipe. And how fun will it be for it to be just you and me for a half hour on the phone? We get to chat live. So make sure you're a member. You definitely want all this. Go to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries or forget remembering the URL. Click the link in the show notes. From there, it's three clicks and then you're official. You'll get this week's recipe for the vegan Parmesan cauliflower steaks with hemp pesto zoodles and details for your live one-on-one session with me. So remember glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries, or just click the link in the show notes. Okay. Stephanie, (laughs) menu number one on our list was Dunkin' Donuts. I think it's just Dunkin' now. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. (laughs) It is just Dunkin'. Clearly, I go there often. Um, (laughs) It is just Dunkin'. And we were talking before we started recording where I was like, I'm assuming the question is really about like the food part of Dunkin' Donuts. But Stephanie, thank you, pointed out that we should really talk about for a second some of these crazy drinks. Yeah. I mean, some of these drinks have as many calories as a meal. Um, or more for that matter. Yeah. And, and then I'm now seeing as I'm scrolling that they have frozen drinks. Like let's – If we're going with coffee or tea, let's stick to the plain things, right? And eat our food instead of drinking a ton of calories. That's my my thing with some of these restaurants. Um, So I'm clicking into the section on the website. By the way, feel free if you're not walking or driving, feel free to pull up the menus and look at these with us. So – I'm one to go, you know me, I'm like protein and fiber, right? So years ago, I used to do, they used to have that egg white veggie flatbread Mm -hmm. that now has become the veggie egg white omelet. Yeah. Um, You could also do like egg and cheese on an English muffin. Yep. But I would say more generally, we want to stay away from – all of the tons of sugar, tons of bread, right? We want to get a little bit of that protein fiber. And P.S., like this is probably more of a snack. Like it's going to – we're in – I hate to say desperate situation, but like we only have a minute. We need something. This can hold us over. I wouldn't say that anything on this menu is a staple. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like the veggie omelet. And and you know what too? Like I've I've been in situations where I've ordered something like this and like I'll just say, Hey, can you not put cheese on it? Yep. And they can do that. So like don't be afraid to customize. 
Oh, and then the power breakfast sandwich, as I'm digging into all this, says it's the veggie egg white omelet with turkey sausage and cheddar um, on a multi-grain, thin sandwich, whatever kind of bread this they're using. So I would go with one of those two, I think, mm-hmm. if I'm stopping into Dunkin' Donuts. You know, on occasion – I love their hot chocolate. I think their hot chocolate is hands down the best hot chocolate. Really? I've never tried it. Yeah. Uh, Every now and then, it makes me very happy. And (laughs) every now and then, you might want a little, you know, munchkin. Oh, yeah. Oh, I looked at the munchkins and like really like the pumpkin one and like only has 70 calories. The other one, so you can have a couple different munchkins. Like I, yeah, somebody brings in munchkins at work. I'm, I'm a sucker for the powdered sugar ones. So I like the chocolate glaze, and I'm not even really a chocolate person, but I like the oh. chocolate glaze. But also, remember when we're looking at all these menus, especially like we're just getting started, but as we're looking at all these menus, calories are only one piece of the puzzle. It's really what those calories are made of that we want to look at. And that's when you start to get into all of the nitty gritty and the details and seeing like, well, what is this actually giving us? Like, like Starbucks um, egg bites. Like if you go on their website and look at the ingredients and the nutrition facts, they're not actually that much egg in them. Ew. So whatever. I just say (laughs) that to say like you might be that person who's going to look all this stuff up before you go. Or look it up on your phone. And we want to look past just that calorie count. Having yeah. said that, like in New York, we have calories on menus. Yeah. Um, you know, or even like when you're when you walk into a place, that's not the same everywhere. So you can use that as sort of a benchmark, but remember protein and fiber quality fat. We're looking for nutrients and the calories aren't the whole story, but you can use it as a little bit, you know, of a guide, but don't forget, you know, the principles that we talk about all the time. And what I like, Jen, about, Mm -hmm. well, I see it on Dunkin', but I've, I've seen it and you guys will see it on the other menus is the nutrition info is readily accessible. So even if not on the you know menu when you walk into the store you can pull it up on your phone and you can kind of dig deeper into like what's actually in these um totally so that that's always helpful absolutely all right are we ready for the next one mm-hmm. all right so next one that you guys sent in was california pizza kitchen or cpk if you will <laughs> so in college i think it was my sophomore year my roommate and i used to love CPK. And they used to have this salad. They might still have it. And as I'm trying to like dig into the menu, it wants me to like pick a location. I'm like, what? Um, anyway, they used to have this salad that was arugula, walnuts, pears, maybe some cheese, and like this balsamic dressing. Go for it. Why not? You know, you could certainly opt out of the cheese, the dressing on the side. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, then for a while in New York, I would sometimes get, they used to have a grilled vegetable salad. which They they still do. Yeah. Roasted veggie. Yeah. 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 So that's a great one. Yep. Yeah. And 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 I like you can do half or full um, and you can add – you know, like a protein if you want, like grilled chicken or shrimp or salmon. Exactly. As I'm scrolling through here too, like I'm looking at their appetizers now, maybe the lettuce wraps. Mm -hmm. I can't really get into the details here of like what's in it, but from what I'm seeing, the petite wedge, the lettuce wraps, you know, you can modify your salads. And remember, right, the objective of our salad is to be getting vegetables. So the more vegetables, the better. You know, you would have to ask them if the tomato basil soup has dairy. If it does, I would maybe stay away from it. Oh, they also, this location has a smashed pea and barley soup. 
That, so that was could good. Be good. I was gonna say, yeah. And you could again, you could do a cup. So if you got a small salad and a cup of that, that's like super filling, I think. Um, totally. And that's you know that's a good meal right there. Absolutely. And listen, if you're going to California Pizza Kitchen, you or someone at your table might want pizza, right? So half the these beach. other things. <laughs> Well, I would say, like, for me, I would order these other things and maybe have one piece or a small, like, a couple bites of pizza from someone. Like, I don't need to order the whole pizza myself. I mean, and how do you feel about, person. like, the kids' size pizza? I mean, or, like, a yeah. kid's size. Even, the, even on the kids' menu, they have a grilled chicken breast with broccoli. I'm like, that looks good. I'd eat that. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, everybody's got to choose for themselves what works. But sure, why not the kid's size pizza and a full size salad? You know, or like a half a salad and the kid's size pizza or instead of soup or whatever. Like you can build your meal and then think about where your protein is coming from, right? So maybe if you're doing the pizza, maybe do pizza that has chicken on it. If you're not putting protein on your salad? Or what are you having that's going to help satisfy you and keep you full for longer? Right? So just thinking about like checking all the boxes. I used to love the barbecue chicken pizza. I feel like we had barbecue chicken pizza recently and it was just like. We did. That one was not great. It was a lot of something. I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> it I, was not CPK barbecue chicken pizza. No, it was not. And admittedly, I ate all the chicken off the pizza <laughs> and threw to. out everything else. She but did, like everyone. Said, <laughs> but not because I was trying to be that person, but like I don't love pizza personally. So I was like – we had also been snacking at this party. It was like a birthday party and we had been snacking, so I wasn't starving. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to eat the – Chicken off the barbecue pizza. Anyway. Oh, and this is interesting. In the pizzas I'm looking here, you can actually now choose the crust you want. So either the hand toss, you could get a cauliflower crust if you're like gluten free um, or a thin crust. So, and they tell you, you know, to take calories off if you get the cauliflower one. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, and like realize too, that brings up, there's a lot of restaurants out there that have allergen menus. Or, you know, food sensitivities menu. So just ask, right? Like maybe the cauliflower pizza helps improve the, you know, quality of the nutrition of your pizza. But I wouldn't necessarily say, oh, it's cauliflower crust. I'm going to eat the whole thing. (laughs) You know. (laughs) Keep your wits about you. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Our next one was a request from you guys, and I was just there. So I'm not even looking at the menu. I'm going to tell you what I did. So (laughs) this one is Cracker Barrel. So when I was in Nashville for this conference, we had breakfast a couple times at Cracker Barrel. And I'm like, I can find something anywhere. Here we go, right? (laughs) So they had on their menu, I can't remember the name of it, but it it had – Egg whites, fruit, I think it came with grits and turkey sausage. So I swapped the grits for potatoes and I got extra egg whites and I was so happy. Like it kept me satisfied so long. It also cost like $15 including the tip. Um, And... I also had packets of the Energy Bits algae so I could get a little bit more fiber in my life. That way I sort of just had those in my bag. But my little egg white breakfast from Cracker Barrel did the trick, you guys. And I'm pretty sure they do breakfast all day. But that's I'm another place. At menu. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's another place where you could do – salad and fries or you could do a burger and you know maybe not if you're watching maybe not eat the bun 
or opt out of some of the cheese or some of the sauces, like salad dressings, put them on the side. You know, some of these places, we sort of just have to accept that they're probably cooking things in butter or oils that we maybe wouldn't necessarily use ourselves. We got to pick our battles. <laughs> you know, it's all okay. We're going to be fine. Um, you know, like I will say though, those egg whites were not greasy at all. Like it wouldn't surprise me if they actually cooked them in some sort of spray rather than oil or butter. Too, That's a good point. Like I've traveled for work and had, you know, the breakfast at the conferences. And I remember somebody was making me an omelet and they put all this like canola oil. And I was like, <laughs> just gagging, watching them cook it. And I like finally said something. I was like, I'm so sorry, but like, there's so much oil. Can you use spray? And they did. And I felt yeah. bad, but at the same time, I'm like, I can't eat that. Like bubbling don't, don't oil. I feel, I can appreciate it. <laughs> I know. And by the way, I love that you said that. Like, we all sort of have this thing of like, oh my God, I'm that person. It's fine. Your thing. <laughs> True. <laughs> like, True. And they have it. They have it there for a reason. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't like he was like, oh, we would need to go to the store and buy some cooking spray. Like they have it right there. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 you could probably say that. Like before you can say, hey, I don't want you cooking it in this or like, can you use, you know, yep. spray yeah. instead of oil. Exactly. And like I, so one of the weeks that I was away in August when we were on vacation, the um, hotel where we stay has an incredible breakfast. And so they have a guy doing made to order eggs and I would generally get an egg white veggie omelet every day. And I would say to him, you know, first day I asked if he could use spray instead of butter. And he said he only has olive oil. And I said, that's fine, because I'd rather the olive oil than the butter, just personally. But then there was one day where it was a different guy behind the um, omelet bar, and, like, they use butter. And I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, like, we're not going to die, generally, unless you're allergic. You know, <laughs> like, it's all going to be okay. <laughs> I feel like we just all need to remember, like, it's just food. We're going to mm -hmm. be okay. And it's just, you know, it's one meal. So like, okay. Right. And, but I can appreciate, like, I was away for three plus weeks. It wasn't in that situation one meal if we look at the whole thing. But in any given situation, it's only one meal. If that makes sense. All right. Similar vein... The next one is Waffle House, which I will tell you was an option when we chose Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Waffle House was an option. I generally at Waffle House, I think they do. Do they have anything other than breakfast? I'm not seeing it here. They do. I think but they I have, think they do, right? They have sandwiches yeah. and stuff. I was shocked yeah. that you can actually, the amount of customization, like do you want wheat toast versus white toast? How do you want your eggs? Like, I, I was shocked at that because I, I've never personally eaten at Waffle House. And I just think like, oh, there can't be anything healthy here. But I was impressed. Yeah. And it's one of those things where this is probably another situation where it's not so much what it is, but how it's cooked. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if their bacon ends up in the deep fryer or something. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just trying to make things up. But you're exactly right. I would do eggs. I would maybe do some bacon or turkey bacon and maybe some wheat toast. If I was feeling an indulgent day, I would probably have a pancake because I like – I'm not a French toast person. Um, you know, or maybe some hash browns or something. But like, again, I'm going to get my protein. I'm going to focus on what I can and onward. I mean, even if you get like their grilled cheese, you can do it on wheat bread. And for their sides, you could get grits, hash browns, or tomatoes. So if you were like, mm, grilled Both cheese is my indulgence. Exactly. Yeah. Like I think I've done eggs. So I used to, 
until COVID, right? There was a conference that I would go to in um, Greens. I was going to say Greensville, um, Greensboro, North Carolina. And there was a Waffle House across the street from our hotel. And I've gotten eggs, tomatoes, toast, you know. And we're going to get to another menu where this applies. But if you have the option, rye, sourdough, and pumpernickel bread tend to be even better options than a wheat when we're looking at menus, um, because what it means to be whole wheat, like, runs the gamut. Yeah. Like, it, just because something is wheat, or even if they call it whole wheat, we don't really know what it is. Um, so rye, sourdough, and pumpernickel tend to be, first of all, lower glycemic, and second of all, have less variation in the, sp- you know, from – Loaf to loaf, if you will, <laughs> you know, from like brand to brand or whatever. Um, so a Waffle House, I would go, you know, for those eggs. And then if you're going to do a different kind of meal, like lunch or dinner there, honestly, it's almost the same as fast food. And we'll talk about a couple of fast food places in a second. But you could do chicken or a burger with lettuce and tomato, ditch the bun, you know, ditch the mayo and all those things, go with some mustard, maybe some ketchup if you want it, and you're good. You know, if they have a salad, go for the salad. Even if, you know, you want to avoid tons of, you know, stuff that's added into the salad if we can, right? We don't need the cheese if we're looking for our vegetables, but I mean, you can find a few things here at Waffle House. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, a place called Waffle House, like a lot of people are going to want the <laughs> waffle. So I would say personally, just looking at their waffle options to just get the plain waffle, uh, maybe with like maple syrup, real maple syrup on the side, because real maple syrup is way better than like anything you're going to find that's like artificial um yep but yeah the chocolate chip the peanut butter one I mean that's a dessert (laughs) totally all right so speaking of fast food let's go to Chick-fil-a because this came (laughs) up from a client and from you guys on social so Chick-fil-a first of all you can do their grilled chicken or their grilled chicken nuggets Mm-hmm. You can, if you want to do the grilled chicken sandwich, do the same thing. Like I said before, go for the lettuce and tomato, ditch the mayo or the special sauces and go for some mustard, maybe ketchup or whatever. You can do lettuce instead of the bun at a lot of fast food places. They'll do that. And then as I'm looking at the salads at Chick-fil-A, their Cobb salad looks like it's um, the breaded chicken on it. But the spicy Southwest salad and the market salad look like grilled chicken. The market salad has some fruit on it. I'm assuming it looks like nuts and cheese as well. So pick your battles. Maybe you say yes to the nuts, no to the cheese. Um, On the spicy Southwest salad, there's definitely cheese, corn, beans, chicken. There's probably some of those like tortilla strips. So like pick your battles. Do you want to just eat them and it is what it is or do you not want those? You know, and especially in these kinds of places, make sure the dressing is on the side and don't use a ton of it. A lot of times like with these calorie counts, you know, you can ask if that's including the dressing or not, but a lot of times it does. I will tell you, I am a sucker for the Chick-fil-A sauce and the Polynesian sauce. And you look and you're like, yep, they're the most high caloric. Well, I guess they have an avocado lime ranch, but they're delicious. Um, But yes, (laughs) switch over. The barbecue sauce is much better. Same with the mustard. (laughs) I mean, I've used the barbecue sauce as salad dressing. You know, like dip my fork in the barbecue sauce. Like, I'm happy with that. Um. I'm skipping ahead in our list, Stephanie, but as long as we're on the fast food train, I'm going to go. So Wendy's. So we were driving from where I grew up in Michigan 
to, it was about a four hour drive ish to Northern Michigan where we were going for our vacation. And we stopped at Wendy's and I decided I was going to eat. So I had their chili, which interestingly enough is um, a really good nutritionally balanced option when it comes to carbs, protein, and fat. So I did the chili and then we also got a baked potato and I had some of it. My mom had some of it and I put some of the baked potato in the chili so that I had like a little more interest. I don't know. I like eating multiple things. That's like a weird me thing. <laughs> um, but it was great. I was satisfied for a while. And, you know, no crazy reactions. But they will also do um, any of their burgers or chicken sandwiches on lettuce instead mm. of the bun. Nice. So plenty of options. I mean, I can't go to Wendy's and not get a Frosty. I love that. I mean, I love <laughs> a good I, Frosty. But you know what? And a good tip, and, you know, I'm sure you heard this too, is like get the kid size. So I yep. get like a junior because I guarantee like once you're done with it, you're going to be satisfied and you're not like, oh, I wish I had a large. Like, no, like the juniors, like it's good. Yeah. And it hits the spot, right? It was, mm -hmm. I had a frosty at one point. Maybe that was last year. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, but delicious. I'll Jake about a good, the chocolate, not the vanilla, the original, the chocolate yes. frosty. Yes. And it's not super, like, I'm not a chocolate person, but I love a chocolate frosty. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So the next one is IHOP, which, so for IHOP, the International House of Pancakes, if you will. Um, full disclosure, I sort of feel like this is kind of the same as Waffle House and Cracker Barrel in terms yeah. of what I'm looking at on the menu and what I'm getting. I think IHOP maybe has more options as far as um, – lunch things yeah but you could get you know a side of fresh fruit you can get some eggs and I mean there's actually lots to choose from yeah they have turkey bacon um, I have a soft spot for turkey bacon slash mild <laughs> obsession um some of their omelets look like very intense um like the spicy poblano has like well and the big steak omelet have like over a thousand all their omelets actually have like over a thousand calories but then you have create your own omelet which I feel like there, there you anytime go. you can create you can do more veggies and exactly. you know maybe no cheese so I'm I'm just a huge fan of when you can customize customize a thousand percent that's what I do like pro tip everybody <laughs> I look at a menu as an indication of what they have in their kitchen rather than prescriptions, mm -hmm. right? So if, if spinach is an option in any omelet, then I can make my own, like look at what's there and then be like, here's what I want in it. Mm -hmm. They'll figure it out. Um, even some of these sandwiches, you know, like – Again, if you're going for some of these things, maybe go without the cheese or, you know, pick your battles. I maybe wouldn't go with mozzarella sticks. <laughs> There's a time and a place for mozzarella sticks, Jen. Um, well, totally. <laughs> totally. But for me, the mozzarella stick would be at a bar watching football. Yeah. Not so much at IHOP. No, no, I, I get it. Hey, and you know what? Don't knock this, but the 55 plus menu actually doesn't look that bad. Like they have a grilled tilapia dinner, which it looks like it has some like quinoa and broccoli. Yum. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, you never know. Here's my thing also about places when looking at a menu. I think about how likely something is to be fresh. And... In that vein, 
how much turnover are they getting in those foods, right? Because if they serve something a lot, it's likely to be fresher than something that they probably don't serve that often. So for example, the diner around the corner from me, I'm not really getting their, you know, shrimp scampi. Because I would bet you they maybe, I bet they're frozen shrimp. I'm sure they serve, you know, they've maybe been in this freezer for a year, right? Waiting for somebody to order shrimp scampi. So, <laughs> so you know, I think it's why I you guys keep hearing me say, like, I'm leaning toward the eggs. I'm leaning toward the fresh veggies, the things where the likelihood of them, you know, having been sitting somewhere waiting for someone to order it is less, if that makes sense. Totally. Yeah, you're not really like, ooh, I have tilapia. Yes. Right. <laughs> so the next one is Cheesecake Factory. And when I saw somebody submit this, I was like, yes, like I love Cheesecake Factory. And funny enough, it's actually a place that I really only eat when traveling. I don't even know if there is one in New York. There isn't one in Michigan. No, all these, so, like, when I go, queue up the menu, it's, like, the closest is in, like, New Jersey or something. A lot of them are in malls, you know? Yes. Or, like, yes. near some big shopping center. I feel like that's, like, a hot place. Yeah. So I will say Cheesecake Factory has incredible salads. And, yeah, there are some where there's croutons and rice noodles and wonton things and, you know, maybe the big vegetable on it is corn. Like we know we can choose better vegetables for us than corn. So I would say watch your cheese, right? Make sure you're getting quality vegetables. Maybe watch your add-ons, right? Like maybe choose the croutons or the, whatchamacallit, wonton crisps or, you know, pick your – I, pick your battles feels like the wrong thing, but like pick your indulgence. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think you go to Cheesecake Factory, you know, you want the cheesecake. So maybe if if that's there, I mean, their portions at Cheesecake Factory are huge. Um, totally. So also don't be afraid to like split something or if you know you're going to have cheesecake, like you'll probably have a few bites of it and be totally satisfied. Like your three bite roll. Yeah. Um, or like if you're going to have cheesecake, maybe have a little bit of a lighter main. So, you know, you know, balance out the cheesecake. Yep. Exactly. And, you know, looking, there's burgers that you could choose from. Like you could do a burger with, you know, grilled onions and sauteed mushrooms on it. You know, ditch the bun, do a salad instead of the side that they're serving with it. Maybe, you know, you can decide where you want to, you know, pick your poison. Interesting. I'm seeing this right now. So they have an impossible burger on their menu. Yeah. And I'm going to recommend everybody go back. It was in, I think it was part two of reading labels. We talked about these plant-based proteins or these alternative meats, if you will. And a lot of them just have a ton of chemicals. And the only thing really plant-based about them is that they're not animal. So I would actually, personally, because I eat animal protein, I would choose an actual burger or the chicken instead of the Impossible Burger. Great. And by the way, we'll, we'll talk about this when we get to um, a steakhouse sort of at the end of the episode. That's the last one on the list. If you're looking to – think about what your priorities are, right? If you're looking to minimize those added hidden things like the salt, the sauces, the things that we don't realize are there – you're actually sometimes better off going with a traditional burger or a steak because restaurants tend to feel like they have to – those are less adulterated to make them taste good compared to chicken and fish and things like that where they try to make them taste like something. Mm -hmm. Well, and this is, this is interesting too with the burger. So you're all about the salad with a side of fries. 
But when looking at <laughs> these menus, I'm like the burger with a side salad, you know, because a lot of yeah. them here, they have a section called glam burgers and sandwiches and they're served with fries or a green salad. So in that case, yep. if I'm getting a burger and I'm like, I'm going to enjoy this burger, whatever, I always get the side salad. Um, I just feel like it balances it out so nice and you really don't miss the fries. Totally. And there was a place actually in the city, I think it's a chain called Burger Heaven. Mm -hmm. Like it's not just here. I used to order when I worked in an office and I would order lunch, they had a salad and I could put a turkey burger on it and I would add grilled onions. And so it would be like cucumber, tomato, the lettuce, my turkey burger and grilled onions. And it was delicious. Mm -hmm. And I didn't miss the bun or all the extra things. You know, not going to lie, on occasion, that would also end up coming with some sweet potato fries because yeah, I'm still me. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, um, really quick on this Cheesecake Factory menu, they have a skinny licious yeah. part of the menu. And as I'm looking at it, what's most interesting to me is that it's really their exact same things. I would bet you it's just smaller portions. So – if portions are challenging for you, maybe this is a great option. Personally, I would rather order the real size salad. Like, for example, if I'm doing this Asian chicken salad, I would rather do the full size salad and just say no rice noodles, no wonton chip things. Mm -hmm. But that's me. Yeah, well, still. You know, and again, yeah. here, dressing on the side, those kinds of things. Always dressing on the side. And another pro tip with the dressing, because I'm a big salad person. I love salads. If the dressings that they have don't seem appealing, you can always ask for just a side of olive oil and, like, regular balsamic vinegar or red wine vinegar. And it's, like, so much Absolutely. better for you. And sometimes I actually prefer it on a salad. Um, so yep. pro tip there. Yeah. And it's one of those where, especially like when I get the dressing on the side and if there's enough things on the salad, sometimes I don't need it. Yeah. I'll like dip my fork. It's not like I get it on the side and then I end up dumping it on the salad. I just like dip my fork in it. And then I don't even end up using the whole thing of dressing. And you're like, oh, wow, I didn't even need that. <laughs> yeah. Um, before we move on, I'm looking at their appetizers because I feel like if you go to Cheesecake Factory, odds are you're with other people or maybe a group and maybe it's not just, I'm going to get my salad, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> so looking at the appetizers, the sliders could be a great option, right? You can decide if you're having half the bun, all the bun, none of the bun. I would skip these like pot stickers and Fond pretzel bites with cheddar cheese fondue. Meh. I don't think we need that. Um, the fire roasted fresh artichoke could be excellent. Mm. I would ask them for olive oil on the side because that garlic dip is probably not what we need, but like the artichoke I'm sure is delicious. Mm -hmm. Um, You could do the calamari. Like sure it's fried, but have a little bit. Asian chicken um, lettuce wraps are probably pretty good. I was good. just look. I was just coming to that. That sounds good. Yep. Guac and chips. Here's another thing. So when you go anywhere, guacamole is a great option. You know where they offer it, and most of the time, you can also ask them for fresh veggie sticks mm. to use instead of chips. So there's a bunch of restaurants in the city that will do that, like Mexican restaurants that, in the city that will do that here. I've been other places where with a bread basket or instead of the bread basket, they'll bring pickles or carrots and celery sticks. So just ask. The worst thing they can say is, we don't have that, <laughs> you know? Um, but especially for the guac, it can be a great option. Like if you've never dipped carrots in guac, like you're missing out. Yeah. And if you're <laughs> gluten-free too, I mean – most places will because if you're gluten free and you have to be, you can't have the chips a lot of times. Yeah. All right. Let's, we have a few more, but let's do our message from our partner for this episode Snap Cleaning Products. Make household and industrial cleaning a snap with their eco friendly, economical, multi purpose snap products. 
Snap's concentrated multi-purpose formulas perform light to industrial strength jobs all in one bottle. Snap products give you the cleaning power of a variety of cleaners, saving you time, money, and valuable storage space. And Snap products are developed with the environment in mind, using plant-based ingredients that are biodegradable, phosphate-free, non-toxic, and bottled in recyclable containers. So maybe with the long weekend of Labor Day, you're having a barbecue and you're going to have extra dishes, or maybe you got to clean your grill, or maybe your idea of Labor Day is doing less. <laughs> I respect that. So either way, Snap is going to come in so handy. So I think it makes it incredibly easy to do dishes. Let's say you had to do like the um, grate from your grill. So take it off the grill, put it in the sink, fill your sink with warm water, a couple drops of the Snap dishwashing liquid. You let it sit for a few minutes and then you just, everything wipes off of it. It's amazing. And I say this every time because I think it's awesome. (laughs) Snap actually stands for safe for nature, animals, and people. So best of all, by the way, the prices are beyond economical. That dishwashing liquid is $12.50 for a 32-ounce bottle, and you're using a couple drops at a time. So this quite possibly might last forever. (laughs) And because you're a salad with a side of fries listener, you get 10% off. So text the word CLEAN, C-L-E-A-N, to 844-947-4800. Four, six. You'll receive the link and coupon code right to your phone. Again, simply text the word CLEAN, C-L-E-A-N, to 844-947-4846. You'll receive the link and coupon code right to your phone. Uh, this is a toll-free number. Standard text and data rates may apply. All right. Back to those menus. Panera is the first one. And I sort of feel like everything we've talked about so far applies to Panera. Like I would avoid too much cheese. I would go with the soups that are tomato-based or Uh broth-based. If you're going to do the sandwich, maybe do a sourdough bread. Um, With the salads, right? Decide if you're doing cheese, dressing on the side. Make sure you're getting like veggies rather than those starchy veggies. I will also say on occasion, if I'm indulging, I am a sucker for their bagels. Mm. So there's that. Yeah. But um, do you have any go-tos at Panera? It's been a long time since I've been to Panera. Yeah. I like their soup and I agree with you. Um, and I would say like, if you're going to get the broccoli cheddar, maybe don't get it in a bread bowl. I mean, I used to love the bread bowls as like a kid. I'm like, oh my God, this is so great. I can eat the whole thing. Wow. I loved, (laughs) I used to get, it was their cream. It was like chicken rice soup Mm -hmm. in a bread bowl when I was in high school. Oh yeah. Oh, that was so good. Oh yeah. But, uh, yeah. So maybe don't do the bread bowl. Um, yep. By the way, they also offer like with your sides, like if you're trying to decide, you know, they, their meals always come with a whole bunch of things. They'll do a piece of fresh fruit. Mm -hmm. I think it's typically apples. You get an apple. Like they have some great options. Yeah. I used to love their Fuji apples, chicken salad. Um, their Greek salad's not bad. I'm just saying now there's a teriyaki chicken and broccoli bowl. Oh, yeah. I would actually – I mean, as a general rule, I tend to avoid noodle-based things and rice-based things. If I am going to get – even if it's like a salad that comes with a grain, I ask them for extra greens and less of the grain Mm. so that I get it – I get the grain for the texture. But I feel like at a place like Panera, if I order this teriyaki chicken and broccoli bowl, it's going to be, and I don't know this for a fact, I'm assuming, it's going to end up being like 90% rice, a few pieces of broccoli, and some chicken. Mm. But I would prefer a lot more broccoli and chicken and a little bit of rice. So I would just pick something else here for whatever that's worth. Yeah. 
I mean, their mac and cheese is really good, but like maybe have somebody. Oh, I've never had yeah, it. Yeah, have somebody else order it. Like my dad, my dad's always down to like order that and then take a couple bites. <laughs> I'm a big fan of ordering what you're going to get and then order something for the table. Yes. Or order something as a side that we're all going to share. And then you can do the three bite rule with that mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. It's good. You know, looking at their breakfast at Panera for a second, I would, it, it kind of goes back to the exact same things mm -hmm. as we were saying with Waffle House and Cracker Barrel and all those. And by the way, I forgot to, it just occurred to me with Cracker Barrel and Waffle House, I would bet you could ask them, worst case, for a hard boiled egg. Yep. I or a couple hard boiled eggs. Like yeah. that's so easy. Yep. For places to do. Oh, totally. I saw that on the Panera, like on the sides you can get, I mean, if you're in there for breakfast, like, you know, you're on the go, you're running, you know, to work meeting or it's by your hotel. Like, yeah, get a couple hard boiled eggs and like a little cup of, you know, fruit yep. or a banana. Um, totally. And it'll hold you over. And again, I see a lot of their coffee drinks, same thing. I mean, the less, the mm -hmm. better. Like you can, some of right. these like frozen caramel co cold brew stuff, I mean, they can add up in terms right. of those aren't the best. Exactly. All right. I think we've exhausted Panera. Let's go to Jamba Juice, which you guys submitted. So I want to... Speaking to this a little more generally, when I go into anywhere that's like a smoothie place, I am going for protein and veggies, right? So I'm looking for a smoothie that is giving me greens. By the way, we've talked about it before. Spinach in a smoothie, you cannot taste. Yeah. Kale more or less goes away. I do not recommend broccoli in a smoothie. That does not go away. Hell yeah, no. Um, <laughs> I mean, I've done it, but it is <laughs> potent. Um, but so I am looking for some – I generally do whey protein at these places. Um, either water or almond milk. I'm not doing any sort of fruit juice as the liquid. And by the way, anything on – like when I used to have a Jamba Juice on my path in the city and I would get something on occasion – even if something came with juice, I would say, can you just do it with water instead? They'll say yes. Yeah. Yeah. I you know, so I'm looking for, so I'm looking for greens, protein. Um, if you want it to be creamy, avocado or mango, make it creamy. And then maybe a fruit or two, you know, for the flavor piece. Yeah. Yeah. I think you want to be careful if these are made from anywhere you're doing smoothies, you want to find out, like, are they made from a mix or are they made from putting these things in a blender with a liquid? I mean, reading here, like I looked, when I first went to the plant base and then the super blends. And I agree, like you got to really read. I know there was one in the airport. I think there's one in the Delta terminal at JFK. And so that if I'm there in the morning, I'm like, well, I'll go there and get one but you mm -hmm. really have to like read it so I like something that has like so I would do like the protein berry right it looks like it has pea protein which I like mm -hmm. I would not do the soy milk I would sub for almond milk um yeah something like that or sometimes you can like cut sometimes they let you customize some place sometimes yeah. Jamba isn't like some of those other hot like I guess higher end smoothie like this. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, so I just pulled up the, because we're getting into pumpkin season, right? Like pumpkin spice latte is back. So I pulled up the pumpkin smash plant-based smoothie from Jamba Juice here. Ingredients, oat milk, cool with that. Pumpkin spice blend, probably fine. Generally, if it's like the powdered pumpkin spice stuff, it doesn't have sugar in it. Mm -hmm. um, but then it's oat milk frozen dessert. Yeah. What's that? That's not part of what our plan was for breakfast or our snack, right? So this really does require that you get into the nitty gritty a little bit or just walk in there and make your own. Yeah. Like even the apple and greens, that's where I would say, can you sub water or sub something else? Because it's got apple, pear, strawberry, juice blend. 
Yeah. Well, okay. So juice blend. So that would make me ask, is this a mix or using the fruit itself? Because sometimes there's like those pre-made liquid things that are used for smoothies. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever seen those? Yeah. And sometimes they use yeah. like yogurt or like they'll say frozen yeah. yogurt in this. And that's obviously, again, not what you want. Right. Right. And then I think when you go to like their baked goods and things like that, Jamba Juice and the like are some of those places where we expect that those other things are going to be great choices. They may not be right? So the bakery, I would probably stay away from. The egg bake, maybe that's an option if you're running around and you need something, right? So it kind of falls into that same – when we get into those food choices, it's kind of in the same category as like the Dunkin'. All right. Anything else from Jamba Juice, Steph? No. I think we we got Jamba. All right. On to Chipotle. So Chipotle is another one. It is a master class in make your own. Mm -hmm. Right? So forget the entire menu. (laughs) Just who cares? Make your own. I always do a bowl. I ask them for all greens in the bottom, no rice. I will do... In any of these kinds of places, I would avoid the refried beans. You can go for either your pinto beans or your black beans, depending on what they have, provided they're like the actual bean. You know what I mean? And then I ask for all the veggies. So sometimes they have grilled veggies and salsas and whatever. I get all the veggie options. (laughs) Depending on how I'm feeling, maybe I'll do a little steak. Maybe I'll do a little chicken. Full disclosure, they often taste very salty to me. And I I mean, I'm sensitive to salt. So I have to sort of be in the mood for it. Um, And then you could get your guac. Although, as they will always tell you, it's extra. (laughs) No problem. (laughs) Right? And then salsa. And I make mine spicy. I like it. And I use like the spicy salsas as the dressing, if you will. I avoid cheese. Maybe I'll do a little bit of cheese depending on my mood, but I avoid like the sour cream, the dairy things. Um, Dairy doesn't love me. And I feel like when we're in these situations, that's an easy thing to leave out where we don't really notice it. And it just helps keep us a little cleaner. Yeah. Like Chipotle, I love too. Like the customized and you know, doing it on their app. And every now and then I do order a burrito. Like I don't even do the lifestyle bowl. I'm like, no, if I'm going to do Chipotle, I'm like all in on the burrito, but it's, they're really big. So I will say like, I never eat the whole thing, but uh, when you're customizing it, it's really funny because they were like, okay, you added these beans or you add this and you see like the calorie stuff goes up and all this. And you're like, oh, maybe I should, it makes you think like, do I want the sour cream or would I rather have the queso? And like, definitely not both, but like, what's going to be better? So. (laughs) Totally. Totally. And like, again, it's choose what you want, do what makes you happy so that you feel satisfied Mm -hmm. and you're moving on with your life. Are we ready for the next one? I like oh. this one. P.F. Chang. So this is like your high-end Asian restaurants, yeah. right? And this is one, too, where I feel like maybe we're going to um, a couple courses, you know, or maybe we're not, like, just by ourselves for lunch. Um, so scrolling through the menu, I like the lettuce wraps. Chili garlic green beans. Okay, Kung Pao Brussels sprouts. This is one. So it says wok chard, Brussels sprouts, peanuts, chili pods, and Kung Pao sauce. So this is one where like we probably think it's going to be like, oh, great. I'm getting so many veggies. This is probably a very indulgent veggie choice. Yeah. Same with- but of the <laughs> options, what were you saying? Oh, same with the crispy green beans. Yeah. And the dynamite shrimp, tempura battered 
shrimp or tempura battered green beans. So like if we were sitting there and people were ordering appetizers, I would rather the Brussels sprouts over the crispy green beans. You know, I would also suggest the other green beans instead of the crispy ones. Or you could also do edamame. It's always you know, good. Simple. Yeah. I feel like at the next thing on this menu that I'm seeing is like dim sum. Yeah. Which is mostly dumplings and things. I'm going to stay away from that at P.F. Chang's. They have sushi. Yeah. Okay, so they didn't have sushi the last but time. But like I none of their sushi is – like you see tempura, tempura – spicy like anytime it's like spicy it usually has like the spicy mayo right and then the other one has like tempura crunch so like yeah not the most healthy sushi like when you think of like you know healthy clean sushi it is not at pf chang's right and then honestly even their salads i'm not super impressed with their salads like the mandarin crunch salad julian vegetables cabbage mandarin oranges almonds rice sticks and a mandarin vinaigrette. Like, what are those vegetables? Like, who, it's kind of, I would rather go for one of those appetizers that's clearly a vegetable. And then, you know, you could even do, like, these are a lot of places. So I'm going to say more generally, like, maybe the Mongolian beef, the beef with broccoli, or, you know, chicken in those things. You could even do... um the stir fried eggplant. So like, yes, it's stir fried, but we're at PF Chang's. We're doing what we can with what we've got. Mm -hmm. Um, The tofu, maybe not bad. Yeah. Miso glazed salmon sounds good. That's salmon, Asian mushroom, spinach, cabbage, garlic, ginger, aromatics, and a miso glaze. Um, Sounds great. I would say like with Asian things, we generally, like I said before, we want to stay away from the rice-based things. We want to stay away from the noodle-based things. We want to stay away from the tempura and the fried things across the board at all the places that we've talked about. Um, Sweet and sour, we generally don't want to do. Um, And, but like you can make a lot of great choices. And by the way, you know what else is really easy at Asian restaurants? Steam. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. All the dumplings have the option of being steamed. Yep. And it's even places where if you're like, look, can I do the chicken and broccoli, but can you steam it and give me the sauce on the side? Yeah, totally. My Chinese restaurant around the corner can do that. I sure hope P.F. Chang's can. Totally. All right. So then I had a request for any Mexican restaurant in the city. (laughs) New York City is known for its Mexican cuisine. Let's just put it out there. Right. (laughs) So here's my general rule at Mexican. Um, I love, like we said before, do the guac with the veggies. I think fajitas are a great standby. Although I think, because basically, by the way, right, we're having grilled vegetables and a protein. Mm -hmm. So cool score right and then maybe you're watching your cheese sour cream and tortillas right so corn tortillas are generally a little better for us than flour tortillas especially if you have a gluten thing so maybe go for the corn tortillas or maybe ditch the tortillas ask for extra lettuce when they bring you all the things that you make your fajitas with and do that yeah and something and like Black beans over refried beans. Um, yep. You know, even salsa. Like, so I am a sucker. I am the person where it's like they put down the chips and salsa and it's like, I am a freaking vacuum. Um, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I just can't stop. Um, so You're not alone. <laughs> I, I know. It's, several people have problems like mine. Um, but what I try to do is when they say like, oh, here, we'll bring you another. No. No, no, don't bring me a second thing of chips. Like, because before you know it, I've eaten two things of chips and then all my entree comes, so. Right, right. So sometimes for me, if I get club soda with a lime, it can keep me from that basket of chips. Wow, how? Because it's like the bubbly makes me feel like my stomach doesn't feel as empty anymore. Or I'll get the veggie sticks 
with the guac and I'll have some chips and some veggie sticks, yeah. right? Because I don't need to feel deprived, but I also don't need an entire basket of chips. No. It's easy to do though. It is. <laughs> It is. So hopefully that helps on the Mexican front um, without a specific restaurant. I mean, we did Chipotle also, but, you know. So then this last one is a very specific restaurant. So it's called Palana. It's a steakhouse in Connecticut. So thank you for submitting this. I'm super excited because I actually think a steakhouse is a great menu to look at. I love eating at a steakhouse and I don't eat that much steak. So my favorite thing at a steakhouse is to make a meal of apps and sides. Mm. Um, so looking at the appetizers, I would go with the tuna tartare or the shrimp cocktail yeah. or the oysters or the crab cake or my absolute favorite crab cocktail. Yeah. Like I can make a meal of like some crab cocktail, some shrimp cocktail, some sides, right? And especially at a steakhouse, like – sides for the table, I can do three bites of this and three bites of that. And I am super happy. Yeah. The this is another one. Yeah. They're, I don't know if you pulled up their menu. Like they have a salad that's pistachios and cranberries and blue cheese and cinnamon croutons. <laughs> yeah. It's a right, little. Like, <laughs> this is where I would maybe go for the the wedge of iceberg. I mean, it's iceberg, but still, right? Maybe the wedge of lettuce or go for the Caesar yeah. and just do the dressing on the side. I have to say, I really love a good Caesar salad. Mm -hmm. Me too. And I love the anchovies. Yeah. And then when it, if you're going to go entrees, you know, like I said, if you're, if you're concerned about the additives and the things that aren't necessarily listed on the menu, go for the steak right? The filet is generally a little leaner. Mm -hmm. um, generally places will also have like a smaller filet and a larger filet. You could do, and then any of these places with their fish, like for example, right here, I'm saying the swordfish can be grilled or blackened. So a lot of these places you can choose how your fish is prepared. So go for like grilled, broiled, um, roasted. Those are some words that we want to look for. This was actually a question and I'll say it more specifically later. Um, I love scallops and, and shellfish and stuff, but their seared scallops come with corn, tomato, and arugula risotto. So I would be the person who says, are those things mixed into the risotto? Could I swap the risotto for a different side? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I ask all those questions. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. What would you get here? I would, well, if I'm at a steakhouse, like, I don't eat steak that often. But when I go to a good place, like, I definitely get the filet. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, the small portion, whatever sort of, like, petite cut. Because that's, like, enough for me. I don't need, you know, a huge 24-ounce yeah. yeah. bone in. Like, it's too aggressive for me. Um, but I agree. Like I would do that and I love the side. So I would do like the grilled asparagus or I yeah. love roasted mushrooms, like good mushrooms with steak. I like love, um, baked sweet potato. And again, that's really good. If you could say put any of the butter or whatever on the side. And a lot of times mm -hmm. they do that. Um, even just a regular potato. Um, I'm hoping somebody yeah. at the table orders the mac and cheese or orders the lobster mac and cheese. So I could take a bite. Um, <laughs> exactly. It's so funny because you picked exactly the sides that I would have picked. Nice. And just to throw it out there, like I would avoid the sautéed spinach or creamed spinach, the Parmesan truffle fries. I'd hope somebody at the table orders them <laughs> so I can have a couple. You know, your au gratin potato. That's not on this menu, but creamed corn, au gratin potatoes, yeah. any of those kinds of things, I would steer clear of. And then – I'm looking at dessert because I feel like if we're going to this restaurant, it's all the things. <laughs> so funny looking. So creme brulee is here. I like creme brulee. That's really the only thing on here that gets me excited. Otherwise, other than sorbet. So if somebody got it, I would have a bite. Mm -hmm. But I actually would look at this and be like, whatever you want. I don't care. Yeah. And sometimes if you want something sweet or people are ordering dessert, I go with the sorbet because it's just like lighter and sometimes it's a nice mm -hmm. little palate cleanse. Yeah. 
And generally, too, at places like this, you could even say to them, do you just have, like, some fresh fruit you could put in a bowl? Mm-hmm. And they'll be like, oh, let me see. Like, the cheesecake comes with fresh strawberries. Just put the strawberries in a bowl. You know? Um, and then sometimes, too, especially with these big meals, sometimes I'll end my meal. When other people get coffee, I'll get warm water with lemon. So – we did it. We got through all those menus, but there were a couple of questions that I want to highlight. So one of the questions that came up was um, words to look out for on a menu, whether it's things that we want to stay away from or things that we're looking for, right? So I would venture to say that you could go through this episode and make a list based on the things that we said, but I would say your cheat sheet of... I'm going to call them yellow light words and green light words, <laughs> right? <laughs> so your cheat sheet of yellow light words, maybe ones that we want to proceed with caution, right? I would say buttery, sautéed, pan-fried, au gratin, Newberg, Parmesan, cheese sauce, scalloped, au lait, à la mode, au fromage, right? That's like with, with milk, with cheese, whatever. Um crusted. If it says crusted, I'm always like, well, what's it crusted with? Um, breaded, fried, tempura, sour cream, cheese, refried beans, like phyllo dough or things that are, you know, baked in dough. Dressings, like we said, rice and noodle based dishes, sweet and sour sauce, things like that. Your green light words that we want to seek out on a menu or ask for, for that matter, right? Steamed, grilled, Broiled, roasted, baked, poached, olive oil, go for the salads, right? Any veggies, usually sushi and sashimi. We can look at a menu and find some great options. In sauces, right? We're avoiding the cream and cheese based sauces. Look for ones that are tomato or wine based. Fresh guacamole, broth based soups. Um, you could do like a chili basil lime sauce, right? Those kinds of things. And then, like I said, Sometimes chicken and fish can have more stuff on them than a steak. You know, looking at a menu, like I said before, I look at the menu to tell me what they have in the kitchen, (laughs) not as gospel. I love apps and sides. And I would also say – Chain restaurants, ask them if they have, not just chain restaurants, a lot of chain restaurants have special menus for dietary restrictions or allergies, but it can't hurt to ask. And, you know, caveat, we all know just because something's gluten-free doesn't necessarily make it the better choice, but we could do that. Yep. Um, I guess just a final note on vacations, like thinking back So years ago, my family used to go on cruises all the time. And there were years where I would go and vacation meant eating everything and indulging all day and trying everything on a midnight buffet, you know? And so there were times where I could go on a cruise and gain five pounds. And then there were times where I gained maybe like one or two pounds. And then I'd stay the same. And eventually, I was able to actually release weight on a cruise. (laughs) But it it was a progression. Like, it didn't go from, you know, one extreme to the other. And so I think that comes down to, for me, it was sort of redefining what vacation means. You know, like, now for me, vacation is, I don't want to beat myself up, right? I want to rest and exercise and nourish myself and replenish myself and indulge on occasion. So like when we were in Northern Michigan, I had my favorite cookies, right? Shout out to Tom's Mom's Cookies (laughs) in Harbor Springs, Michigan. They're amazing. We have them once a year, but I had my favorite flavor and that was it. You know, it's not eating everything at every meal, and maybe we don't need to define vacation by throwing everything out the window. Yeah. I was looking up Tom's mom's. 
Oh, that's funny. Um, so it, Stephanie, any thoughts? On, like, what does vacation mean to you? Like, how do you handle vacations with things? I mean, I agree with you. Like, if it's a place that you're nostalgic for that you haven't been or like you're in a new city or location and they're known for something like I go for it. Um, but I'm also crazy and then I work out on vacation. Me I'm one too. of those people that likes to do that. So all about balance. <laughs> a thousand percent. Sorry. I was just taking a sip of water. A thousand percent. Like I'm the person because my idea of vacation is feeling good. Right. And what makes me mm -hmm. feel good is getting that activity in. So I like to do that when I'm on vacation. You know, same. It wasn't always that way. It was a progression to get there. <laughs> you know. And yes, these Tom's mom's cookies look legit. They're so good. <laughs> they look so good. Like the peanut butter, the oatmeal butterscotch. I, oh. My favorite is the cinnamon sugar. That looked great. So over the years, like I love them, but over the years I've gotten to the point where now I only get the cinnamon sugar. But the peanut butter Ooh. is really good. This time I got the cinnamon walnut. Amazing. Ooh. It was like not super sweet. It was just delicious. Anyway, Stephanie, oh. anything else as far as, you know, challenging restaurants or this menu mayhem conversation? I mean, I think we covered a lot of it. I mean, people just take away that you can customize. Like Jen said, you can find something anywhere. Like I used to have that same fear where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm at a rest stop or something. And there's like only fast food places here and I'm going to starve. You're not, you can navigate yep. it. And it's like, when in doubt, like you also don't have to eat the whole mm -hmm. thing. Like you know, so may, you can make it work. And I think that's like helped, helped calm me down too. Cause I used to get that anxiety as well. Awesome. I love that. And we're human, right? We're going to figure it out and we're going to be fine. Yes. All right. So let's do our nutrition nugget. You ready? Yes. All right. So this week we're talking about syrups for your coffee, you know, like those flavor syrups, like whether it's Dunkin' or Starbucks or even your local coffee shop. I feel like everybody has them now. You know what I'm talking oh, yeah. about? Oh, yeah, the flavors. I used to be huge on that stuff. What was your flavor? I was like the sugar-free vanilla in my Starbucks like latte or something. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about it for a second because the sugar-free versus the regular versus nothing, like what do we got? So I think the first thing to remember is sweet – is an acquired taste. The more we have it, the more we want it. The more we have it, the more of it we need for something to register as sweet or salty, right? Because salt is also an acquired taste. So, the, so this is specifically sweet. But so the more we have it, the more we want it, the more we have it, the more of it we need for something to register as sweet. So maybe you start out with one pump and then eventually you're like, I don't even taste it. I need, you know, four whatever. So <laughs> the other thing to remember is key to our metabolic health and our overall health is balancing blood sugar. And when we eat sugar or high glycemic carbohydrates, we need to blunt that impact, right? We can blunt the impact of that with fiber, protein, or fat. So applying this to coffee drinks, which Coffee in and of itself doesn't have any of those nutrients, protein, fat, or fiber. So if we're adding the syrup, we may want to consider adding some low-fat milk so that there's a little bit of fat to help with that sugar bomb. Hmm. Just a thought, right? And then I wanted to see really what was in these bad boys. So I looked up, you know, the Tarani, whatever. I recognize the label, T-O-R-A-N-I is the brand. And I recognize the label. I see that one all over. Yep. So I looked at their vanilla. So a serving size is two tablespoons. It had, oh, by the way, I have no idea how many pumps are in a tablespoon. Like maybe somebody can test that. Or if you work at Starbucks or somewhere, let us know. <laughs> right. But the serving size is two tablespoons. It has 80 calories and 20 grams of sugar. Wow. All of which are added sugar. 
the ingredients are pure cane sugar, water, natural flavors, sodium benzate, which is a preservative, potassium sorbate, preservative, and citric acid. So we don't always know how much they're using when they make our drink. So maybe ask for less than they usually put in. Like I said, maybe add a low-fat milk or something. I will say on occasion at Starbucks, I'll ask for hazelnut. But I will ask them how many pumps they normally put in, and I'll usually ask for like half of that or at Mm -hmm. least one less than what they normally do. Mm -hmm. But then there's also the sugar-free because I hear a lot of people like, like you said, right? Oh, but you know, I used to get the sugar-free vanilla. So I looked at the Tarani sugar-free vanilla, same serving size, two tablespoons, zero calories. Other than that, oh, the nutrition fact said five milligrams of sodium, but that was it. Then the ingredients were purified water, vanilla extract with other natural flavors, potassium sorbate, sodium benzate, right, those uh, preservatives, citric acid, then xanthan gum, sucralose, and I'm probably going to say this wrong, acelsifame potassium. (laughs) I don't know. I mean, essentially what we're seeing here, I suppose this the sweetener is sucralose, right? Xanthan gum is a um, texture thing. So I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> natural flavors, especially in vanilla, that's that one I mentioned in another episode. It's like stuff from like a beetle's butthole. Like – Yeah, you can Google it. Like natural vanilla flavoring comes from like, it's not pretty, but whatever, right? (laughs) So here's the deal, right? Sure, it's not likely to spike our blood sugar using the sugar-free syrup, right? And this is where, you know, pros and cons and we choose what works for us. So for some people, Maybe we're focused on, you know, the fact that it's okay, sucralose versus the cane sugar, that's the battle we're picking. For other people, you might be saying, you know what, I want to have fewer man-made things and I'm going to go with the cane sugar. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's sort of in a different place and we want to just make the choices that work for us and remember whether we use the the regular one or the sugar-free one, it's still sweet. It can still keep us addicted to that taste of sweet. So like I said, figure out what's better for you personally. And maybe those sweet syrups in your coffee are keeping you addicted to the taste of sugar. Or maybe you're finding that the one pump use, you know, is enough And, or you could scale back to one pump. You know, I would say keep an eye on it. If you're using the syrups that have sugar, again, maybe add a little low-fat milk and pick your battles. For some of us, it's a simple way to scale back on these added things that we may not even notice day to day. For others of us, that might be the one thing that makes you happy in the morning, (laughs) in which case, you know, you do you. (laughs) You got to pick your battles. And we're in different places. So one thing that works for somebody, the opposite might, you know, be better. But I do think scaling back on these additives could be a really simple way that won't impact you all that much to take small steps toward a healthier you. At least, though, because we've had this conversation, we can all choose intentionally what we're doing. What do you think? I like it. And if you want some flavor, this is what I do now. Like on the few times that I treat myself to a latte, especially at like Starbucks or whatever, I'll put some um, some cinnamon. Me too. On the top. Have the cinnamon and kind of stir it in. Yep, it's delicious. Exactly. I will say when I get ice drinks, cinnamon does not mix very well, but I still like it. I think the cinnamon is amazing. By the way, cinnamon has also been proven to be helpful for blood sugar. So there's that too. 
Yeah, there you go. Maybe we need a new Trisha Nugget on cinnamon now. <laughs> oh, there, hey, next week. Right. All right. Well, Stephanie, thank you again for joining me. I always appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Really enjoyed today's episode and the Nutrition Nugget. Yay. So as always, everybody, I'm your host, Jen Trepic. Connect with me on Instagram at Jen Trepic, J-E-N-N-T-R-E-P-E-C-K. Really all social media, that's the handle. The website is asaladwithasideoffries.com. Please send me a message, whether through the website or on social media. Tell me your key takeaways, any ideas or questions you have. This is also the easiest way to learn more about working with me. And let's level up your game by becoming a podcast member, right? Go to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries to show your support for this podcast, our community, and most importantly, supporting your health, right? This week, you'll get the recipe for vegan Parmesan cauliflower steaks and the hemp pesto zoodles feels like a restaurant. <laughs> and since it's September, your live Q&A one-on-one session with me, I can't wait to talk to you. So until next week, remember, decide how you want to feel physically and mentally after the meal or after the trip. Then choose accordingly. And maybe your new mantra is, I can find something to eat at any restaurant. Because I promise you, you definitely can. Well, friends, that's it for today's episode of Salad with a Side of Fries. Congratulations for making yourself and your health a priority. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to click subscribe or follow on your favorite podcast platform, share us with a friend, and we'll be back next week. Always remember, you deserve it and you are worth it. Happy healthy.